distinguished future physicians, welcome to Stomp on Step 1, the only free video series that helps you study more efficiently by focusing on the highest yield material. In this video, we're going to be covering trinucleotide repeat expansion diseases, trisomy 21 or Down syndrome, and chromosomal translocations. It might seem kind of random to throw all these into a video, and it's basically just because these are the few topics that didn't fit into any of the other videos, so I just threw them here together so I could wrap up this genetic section. This is the last video of my seven video series covering genetics for step one. So hopefully you've already watched this whole section and now you're ready to move on to some of my other sections. You can see here in the top right corner that I give Down syndrome a high yield rating of three. For those of you that don't know what that is, a high yield rating is a rating scale from zero to 10 that gives you a rough estimate for how important each topic is for the step one exam. And if you'd like to learn more about how I calculate the high yield rating, you can head to my website here. Down syndrome is trisomy 21, meaning you have three chromosome 21s instead of the traditional two. It's caused by non-disjunction during meiosis, which leads to an extra chromosome 21 being present. So instead of having 46 chromosomes, you now have 47. It's often diagnosed even before the baby is born because there's certain tests that are given to almost all pregnant women, at least in the U.S., that can help identify this. The main ones are going to be blood tests for alpha feta protein or AFP, and human chorionic gonadotropin, or HCG. Now the blood test of the mom is going to have low AFP and high HCG in Down syndrome. You can also do an ultrasound. You can see increased nuchal ridge in Down syndrome. Sometimes it's also described as seeing nuchal translucency. Don't get these test results confused with neural tube defects which have high AFP, so it's the opposite. Additionally, you can see really high HCD in molar pregnancies and certain types of cancers like seminomas, choriocarcinoma, or germ cell tumors. So that's similar to how you have high HCG here. You can also see low HCG in ectopic pregnancies. But I'll cover these tests more in the reproductive and pregnancy section. One of the most important things to know about trisomy 21 or Down syndrome is the many things that it's associated with. One of them will be acute lymphoblastic leukemia, or ALL. Another one would be Alzheimer's, which somehow accidentally got combined on the first line there, but those are supposed to be two separate things. Sorry about that. We've got atrial septal defects in the heart. You're gonna have a simian crease, which is a horizontal crease across the palm of the hand. You'll often also see facial abnormalities, which might be described in the question stem as flat facial features. Sometimes I'll we'll also call it prominent epicanthal folds, which are just the folds next to the eyes. And duodenal atresia is more common in Down syndrome. So now we'll jump over to chromosomal translocations. And this is non-homologous chromosomes swapping sections. It's basically abnormal form of crossover during mitosis or meiosis. During this process, genetic material can be la lost or added. And when genes move to new chromosomes, they can now be under the regulatory control of new promoters and other regulatory processes. This means you can get a lot more or a lot less of certain gene products than you're supposed to, which can cause a lot of problems. Translocations a lot of times are associated with infertility or certain cancers. And here are some of the translocations that are going to be the highest yield for step one. I just wanted to put those up here, but I'm going to cover all of these in more detail in the appropriate organ system, as well as trying to come up with some mnemonics to help you remember them. Now we can cover trinucleotide repeat expansion disorders. And that's when an abnormal DNA replication causes a repetitive section of DNA to be repeated more times than it should be. For example, a gene may have a certain three nucleotide code repeated a dozen times normally, and then in a diseased person, that same 
three nucleotide code instead of being repeated a dozen times is repeated hundreds of times. It is as if the DNA replication machine here gets stuck on this three nucleotide code and repeats it too many times. It is as if the DNA replication machine here gets stuck on this three nucleotide code and repeats it too many times. It is as if the DNA replication machine here gets stuck on this three nucleotide code and repeats it too many times. The severity and age of onset of these diseases can be predicted by the number of repeats present. The more repeats you have, the sooner you're going to get the disease and the more severe it'll be. Here are the two highest yield examples of trinucleotide repeat expansion. Huntington's disease, which is a CAG repeat expansion, and Fragile X syndrome, which is a form of mental retardation with facial abnormalities. Anticipation is when you have an earlier onset of disease in each subsequent generation. And that's most often seen in these trinucleotide repeat expansion diseases. This is because the number of repeats is increasing in each generation. This phenomenon is observed because the presence of a high number of trinucleotide repeats increases the likelihood of an error during replication. So basically the presence of a lot of these repeats one after the other increases the likelihood that more repeats are going to be made and the mutation itself causes further mutations. Here are some related topics that I give a high yield rating of zero and I've decided not to cover in these videos. If you choose to study these topics, I suggest you hold off on doing so until after you've already mastered the higher yield material. That brings us to the end of this video. If you liked it and want me to make more of these, please tell your friends and classmates about Stomp on Step 1. I don't have the resources to do any sort of advertising and I don't have the time to really dive into anything like social media marketing. So the only way people are going to find out about these videos is by you, the viewers. So please do pass that on. Thanks and good luck with the rest of your studying.